Good afternoon. Myself, S. Vrakthamit, Faculty Department of ENC, SDM City, Dhawad. We're going to discuss about the logarithmic inequalities and extremal property. Logarithmic inequalities we are going to use when you're talking about extremal property. So, beginning, we'll talk about the logarithmic inequalities, then we'll go to the extremal property. The figure shows the two functions. The first function is a linear, and the another function is a logarithmic. You can observe that. The log function is always lies below the linear function. But both values are equal only at x equal to 1. So further, you can observe that the straight line is a tangent to the log function at x equal to 1. You can see the previous slide again and check it. This is true only for a natural logarithmic. Throughout the discussion of this particular subtopic, we talk about natural logarithmic. Remember, throughout our ITC, most of the chapters, we talk about a log base 2, but in this, we talk about a log natural logarithms. From the figure, we can write, log of x is always less than or equal to x minus 1. And both will become equal only when x is 1. Multiply equation 9 by minus 1, we will get ln of 1 by x is greater than or equal to Minus 1 minus x. This particular property we use when you are establishing the extremal property of the entropy function. Consider a memoryless source. It is emitting a total Q symbols. Take its symbols are S1, S2, S3 up to SQ. When I, I have a SQ symbols automatically I will be having a PQ probabilities, take those probabilities are respectively P1, P2 up to PQ. We know that entropy of the source is given by H of S summation PI log 1 by PI bits per message symbol. Let us consider log Q minus H of S. So H of S just now we have taken, rewrite that summation. Pi log 1 by Pi. Another point which you have to remember is when we add all the probabilities the answer become equal to 1. Hence we are taken summation 1 to Q Pi equal to 1. Because we are going to use this particular summation Pi equal to 1 in the next uh, slide. Log Q minus H of S are written again. Simply I have included summation Pi extra. Even though I include summation Pi, it is not going to disturb the values because summation of Pi 1 to Q, when I all add all the probabilities, the answer will become equal to 1. 1 into something will remain something. Simply I have taken a summation 1 to Q Pi common and I have rewritten the above equation. You can pause whenever you want this particular video and re rewind but try to understand we know the log rules log a plus log b equal to log a b using such rules now i can rewrite the above equation as summation 1 to q pi log q pi another log rule we know log x to the base b equal to log r to the base b into log x to the base r Using this, I can write now log QPI to the base E. Now I am writing a log QPI to the base E and I got equal to log 2 to the base E, log QPI to the base 2. Now consider the few equations from the previous slide and try to find out the log QPI to the base 2 equal to. I got equation number 12. Now I am going to fill equation number 12 into the equation number 11. And rewriting the equation number 11, I got summation pi log qpi divided by log 2 for all these log base a I am using. And what I am doing, instead of writing 1 by a, I can write a raised to minus 1. Using that concept, instead of writing 1 by log 2 to the base e, Simply I can multiply log e to the base 2. That I have done in the next line. 
Now take this as the equation number 13. From the equation number 9, logarithmic inequalities, what you have taken? Let me rewrite. ln of x is less than or equal to x minus 1. Simply multiply by minus 1, we will get uh, ln of x is greater than mi 1 minus x. Or I can write ln 1 by x is greater than or equal to 1 minus x. Now we can take ln of qpi. Simply x is nothing but you can take over 1 by qpi and rewrite. So you got the equation number 14. Ln of QPI greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 by QPI I got. Let us multiply both the sides by PI then taking a summation I equal to 1 to Q. So equation I got is this. Simply I am multiplying PI both the sides summation I am taking. You can try to compare this equation with the previous equation number 15. Only I have done multiplication of PI and I have taken a summation. Now multiply both the sides by log e to the base 2. I got this equation number 16. Now I can rewrite this equation 16 only. Simply I am multiplying summation pi inside. I got this equation. The same equation I will take into the next slide. And I have rewritten. Now summation 1 by q is equal to 1. Take any value of key. If you take uh, 3, 1 by 3 or plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 will get 1. 1 by 5 we take, sorry, q equal to 5. 1 by 5 you have to add 5 times, it will become 1. And another important point is, when you add all the probabilities, pi, it will become equal to 1. And 1 minus 1 will become equal to 0. 0 into something is equal to 0. Now let us compare a left hand side of equation 16 with equation 13. I can say this LHS of a 16 is a log Q minus H of S. So I, RHS of equation 16 is always 0. Reason is summation PI is 1 minus summation 1 to Q. 1 by Q are taken. That is also 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 into something is 0. Therefore I can say log Q minus H of S is greater than or equal to 0. Or another way I can say H of S is always less than or equal to log Q. The equality holds good only when pi minus 1 by q equal to 0 for all the values of phi. Or I can say when all are equiprobable, then h of s maximum you are going to get. So h of s maximum is the log q to the base log 2 bits per message symbol. Or I can say the conclusion, the entropy attains a maximum value when all the sources so symbols becomes equal. Thank you.